looks back at internal documents uh, from the sugar industry and finds that back as far as 1965 to 1967, they made significant uh, moves to uh, force the concept uh, of a debate to work in their favor. So the debate at that time was, uh, what is the cause for so many Americans having heart attacks? And on the one side was, well, it's fat, animal fat cholesterol. And on the other side was, it's sugar. And they said, hmm, that fat thing sounds pretty good for us. Right. <laughs> so they started uh, a, 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 a paying and uh, getting advisors and uh, doing studies to support the concept that fat was it. And uh, the pretense was, if fat was it, then if Americans decreased that portion of fat in their diet, then it could be taken up by carbohydrates and sugars. This, yeah. was, a, this was a systematic plan for sugar-producing companies or companies that sold sugar products, candy, soda, and the like, um, to deflect blame from their product and put it on saturated fats. And then you thought that that just occurred in politics in the 2000s. Mm. <laughs> it appears that it goes way, way, way back to the 1960s. And, uh, you know, go the government in terms of the FDA and the, and, uh, the dietary guidelines, uh, they've all bought into this. And these were highly regarded. And these were um, doctors from Harvard. Yes. Uh, and this was before the age. So, I mean, it, for full disclosure and concept of what we're talking about now, a lot of things have changed. Mm -hmm. And so it is impossible to publish research now in these types of journals. Uh, and in the, the first study they talk about in terms of who sponsored it and all that was in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is one of the most premier journals in all of medicine. But we cannot publish anything in those journals now uh, without noting... A, what the funding source was for the research that was done, so who funded it, and B, in terms of the individual authors, uh, do we get any other extra funding from any other industries or potential conflicts of interest that uh, would sort of sway the results of the study, saying, well, you know, these guys are, are getting a lot of money from the sugar industry. And that's an interesting finding, but it might not be the whole truth and so we in in the 2000s that exists now in 1967 that so, did not exist so there were no checks and balances back in, in the 60s all right doctor not to let them off the hook because this is uh, a pretty interesting um revelation but it's almost like the cigarette industry saying cigarettes don't cause cancer we always kind of knew sugar was one of the leading causes of obesity yes Yes. And uh, the connection in terms of sugar, obesity, uh, leads us to diabetes. And uh, diabetes, um, that connection to heart disease, well, sometimes diabetes causes other things first. And, and so it's a little bit more murkier. Mm. Um, so, you know, what do we, we can go back in time and, and get all upset about, wow, how did, the, how did this all happen and, and how do we let this happen and, and this is a travesty and this is bad. You know, I, I think um, in some ways it was, in some ways it's highly interesting and, and it's interesting in terms of right now, there's not just one thing that causes heart attacks. It's not just fat. It's not just sugar. We mm -hmm. can't, we get trapped into this concept all the time into trying to oversimplify and the blame game the bait and switch like you know i got stuff to hide but don't look at me i'm going to start talking about you right and mm -hmm. uh that's the classic concept that went on here uh they they criticized saturated fats over sugar how bad are saturated fats? Did saturated fats get a bad black eye from this, or are they as bad as everyone thinks they They're are? They're as bad as everybody thinks they are. And sugar is, uh, uh, I think, an equal contributor. Uh, so, you know, I think we have two bad things. Um, you know, the, the context of really what we should be eating. <laughs> when, when Americans didn't get heart disease, uh, A, we farmed our own food. B, we worked pretty darn hard to do it. Right. And C, we didn't have cars and we walked around a lot and we worked a lot. And so mm -hmm. if you go back to those days of concepts, did they have sugar back then? Yes. Uh, did they have fats back then? Did they eat meats? The answer is yes. But they, they ate them in more moderate doses. 
and portions. And they and worked harder to get it. They worked it. harder mm-hmm. to get it. Yeah. 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 Uh, Dr. Michael Lim, great as always. You are, did you go to undergrad or to, or to, uh, Medical school at, at uh, Michigan. I went to undergrad at Michigan, yes. and then I did my uh, cardiology training at Michigan. Did you see Jim Harbaugh? Let's see what he was eating over the weekend. So Jim oh Harbaugh, gosh, here we go. dude. Oh he was eating boogers on yeah. the sideline. Did you yeah. see this? Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it is, as I want to get a medical opinion from somebody from Mizzou. <laughs> Is it? Is it? Will you? Will you become <laughs> sick if you eat your own boogers, Doctor Michael Lim? <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. I bet you've never, the, I know you've never been asked this question. The answer is, uh, we. I, I think when you don't know something, you have to think about, well, what are the components of it? Yes. All right. So mm-hmm. where does a uh, quote unquote bugger come from? <laughs> your nose. Okay. Or, right. So your nose and the back of your mouth is actually connected. That's what I said. So it's it's like you're taking it from your mouth and putting it back in your mouth. So it's... Relatively safe. But I think the root cause for this was the fact that his offensive line and his running game <laughs> actually wasn't as good as what he wanted it to be. Yes. And so it is, is eating a booger is a stress reliever. In it a was, sense. I think. Yes. How's Nebraska doing? They're the 2 and 0, baby. They're playing they're playing uh, Oregon uh, Saturday. Oh, that's a big game. Yeah. Now. Yeah. They're, they're 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 avoiding I don't think they play on the schedule this year. Not Michigan. Yeah. Cuz I I'm I'm a, the topic. I'm a Big 10 grad too, you know. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. why I had that. There you go. <laughs> Dr. Michael Lim with his bow tie looks good as always and great information. Doctor, right. thanks for checking thanks, in. Thanks, guys. 825, <laughs> you're a Big 550 KTRS. Here Salem. you are asking a highly educated cardiologist. A world-renowned doctor. <laughs> world-renowned. About boogers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have no shame. <laughs> we have no shame. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> now you know. And I, Well, not only that, a world-renowned doctor said that your nose and your mouth are connected. That's what I said. Mm. Doctor, uh, there you go. Dr. Michael Lim. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> now you know why I didn't go to medical school. St. Louis Closet